Hey guys, it's May from Where is May Ling? And in this episode, we're gonna be talking about traveling to New York City. How do I choose which airport to fly into? New York is something for sure special, and there's gonna be more than one video. But in this one, we're just gonna talk about choosing between the actually four airports that you could fly into New York City uh, for a visit to my hometown. Now, I'm gonna cover five areas of consideration. The first is the distance time factor. You know, your time is very valuable to you, and if you choose the wrong airport, sometimes that can be quite painful. The second are cost considerations, and kind of a subset of this is really transportation as well, because there are some whammies. The third thing I'm gonna talk about is for my overseas international travelers. And if you're a New Yorker that hasn't had a chance to go overseas, I'm gonna cover a lot of the considerations there as well that you might care about. And the fourth thing is the facilities themselves. Each one of the airports is a little bit different. Finally, I'll just close out with a couple of other considerations. Um, and before we get into that, it would be amazing if you could like, share, subscribe to my station, comment below. That always helps me know what kinds of things are helpful. Additionally, it would be awesome if you check out my Instagram, where is May Ling. I'm always looking for a couple extra views there as well. Now. Let's get into which airport should you choose to come visit me in New York City? Now let's just start out by naming the four airports that service New York City in case you were completely unaware that there were four. The first one is LaGuardia and that airport code is LGA. The second one that I would name is John F. Kennedy and that one is airport code JFK. The third airport that services New York City is actually located in New Jersey, and that would be Newark Airport. And the airport code for Newark is EWR. And the final airport that services New York City is Westchester, and that airport code is HPN. Now, obviously, there's private airports too, so you ballers taking net jets, good for you. But for those of us that fly commercial, those are the four major airports airports that you're really going to want to consider. Anything else that's a little bit farther away is going to cost you so much time that you might as well just go ahead and rule it out. Now let's talk about the first consideration, distance and time. And I mean that in a number of different ways. New York City, like so many cities, but I would even argue kind of in its own special way, has significant traffic and a significant flow to the hours that differs from other places. Now, I know that there are places in Asia in particular, which I've been to, where the traffic is pretty tremendous. It really doesn't move here uh, sometimes. And so choosing which airport can mean everything from a one-hour trip into the city to a three-hour log jam traffic situation where you really want to cry by the end of it. You know, whereas money usually can solve the problem of distance and time, in New York, that's a little bit less so the case. Now, the first thing that you wanna really understand about which airport to choose is it kinda matters what time you're flying in. Now, if your flight is before the hours of 6.30 a.m. in the morning or after the hour of 10.30 p.m. at night, then distance may be slightly less important, but time is still very important. Let's start with early morning considerations. If you are landing before 5 a.m. in the morning, I have landed around 3.30 in the morning before 4 a.m. in the morning, you are definitely taking a cab if you are coming from Newark. There will not be another way for you to get into the city. If you're lucky, you might be able to take an Uber or something like that. Cabs in particular from Newark are a bit more expensive than you would think, and it has to do with the fact that they have to pay both ways on the toll. Realize that if you are landing super early in the morning, you've reduced the amount of ways that you can get into the city from Newark to one. And so things do abruptly wake up at five o'clock. So if you're landing at 4.30, by the time you deboard, you're probably in the perfect spot uh, to just hop onto wherever you need to hop onto. But just realize that things move kind of slow first thing in the morning in Newark. Now, that's also true to some extent at JFK, but um, you can always get a cab from JFK and you can always more easily get an Uber from JFK. 
in my opinion. Maybe other people feel differently. And it's really Uber, Lyft, or any of the car services. Now, on the departure side, there are a few flights that will leave at 6.30 a.m. in the morning. I have definitely been on them. For early morning flights, it's really cab service that you're going to need to get to uh, Newark. JFK and LaGuardia, you may have still a couple other options. For a lot of people just use Google Maps to figure out the difference between the airports and where they might end up going. But I really want to caution that um, time of day can matter a lot. And it really has to do with crosstown traffic and Manhattan. So let's say that you are staying on the west side of Manhattan, like just split Manhattan down the middle. Well, if you're staying on the west side of the Manhattan, then the best airport for you to fly into is actually Newark. And um, that is because the west side of Manhattan, even with tunnel traffic, even with everything, is e more easily serviced through Newark. If you're on the east side of Manhattan, if you're staying in Queens, Long Island City, Roosevelt Island, or if you're staying in Brooklyn, then depending on where precisely you're staying, it's going to be LaGuardia or JFK. To a much lesser extent, it will be Westchester. There, I highly recommend you use Google Maps and map out the exact route that you're going to take at the time of day that you're intending to land because it can vary a lot. There's not nearly the same sort of traffic, I'm going to say, in Queens and Brooklyn, but there's definitely traffic. Like I have sat on my way to JFK for an hour and a half in Brooklyn after it took me an hour to get out of Manhattan. So it can be something really special. Now if you're staying in the northern part of Manhattan or the Bronx, then you know, actually Westchester Airport's a pretty decent option and you can look on Google Maps as the best way to navigate that. Now let's talk about the cost to get into the city. And here we're really talking about transportation costs. If you're coming into Manhattan, Brooklyn or Bronx, just realize that every time you cross a bridge, you've got a toll. So if you're staying in the Queens or Brooklyn, you've got two bridges or two sets of tolls that you're going to have to pay if you're coming in from Newark. Additionally, if you're coming into the city via a car service, taxi, Uber, Lyft, there may be additional fees, not just because of tolls, but because of one-way carriage. The taxis have a one-way carriage fee. The um, Uber and Lyft do not. So you really do want to investigate what's going on there. I would also mention that surge pricing from Newark changes the dollar value of uh, those car services dramatically depending on the time of day. And that JFK has a flat rate service, meaning that there is a flat rate to go from JFK into the city via cab service. And oftentimes, depending on the time of day and surge pricing, that can be a bit more affordable than taking a car service such as Lyft or something like that. Now, there are other car services, but we're not going to talk about that in this video. To navigate between distance, time, and cost, if this consideration is the major one for you, definitely use Google Maps on the time of day. And then once you land, use Google Maps again to see if there's some crazy traffic jam that'll throw off all the best laid plans. Additionally, for LaGuardia, I would mention that there's a little bit more limitation on your mass transit options. There definitely is one, but if you're carrying a bunch of luggage, it may not be a realistic option. Now, the third consideration is customs. And really, we're only talking about JFK and Newark because the other two airports are domestic airports and would not have a customs office in them. But my personal preference is always to fly into Newark versus JFK. It really has to do, in my opinion, with the fact that there are fewer international flights coming through Newark versus JFK. What do I mean by that? Both airports have a ton of volume going through them. Don't get me wrong. These are both big international airports. The area for Newark, somehow I get through customs significantly faster. I have far less horror stories of it taking forever versus JFK, even with TSA pre and everything, it seems to go a lot slower there. Now, I have TSA Pre and I also have Clear, and I would say that that helps a lot, especially in Newark. It helps a lot for sure to get through very quickly. There is also an app that you can download, US Passport, that may help you get through. Now, let's talk about the facilities. Strangely enough, this is less about the airport and more about the terminal because each terminal has been updated differently in each airport. So for Newark, if you are flying into Terminal 3 United, 
you shouldn't have any issues. It's a beautiful terminal. It's been well maintained. And if anything, United has upgraded various sections of it over the years. So it looks fine there. But again, not an ideal terminal. It is a budget terminal for a lot of the budget airlines. So realize that's how Newark uh, lays out. But if you're flying out of Terminal C at Newark, you probably could hang out there for a while. It's got plenty of shopping. There are nice restaurants there that you can enjoy. There's even seafood restaurants there that aren't scary. We just finished the upgrade to one of the lounges uh, that took forever, like two, three years for them to upgrade. So if you do have United Lounge access, it's really beautiful in there so you could hang out. If you're flying out of JFK, well, I hope you have lounge access is really the nicest way to say it, especially if you're flying international. That terminal really has limited options for food. And then when it gets very busy, which it often does because all of the international flights are trying to hit it at the same time, it can be pretty rough in that terminal. I think that's terminal one for JFK. Now, pretty much every lounge partner has a lounge in that terminal. And I do believe that Priority Club um, also has access, as does Centurion. So just look that up in advance if you're flying out of that terminal and or consider um, a way to get access for you and your family. The JetBlue terminal and the American terminal have been recently upgraded and they look a lot better. It used to be that the American terminal is pretty scary, but there have been some improvements there. I wouldn't say it's the most pleasant experience, by the way, but it's a lot more manageable. The other terminals can be very hit or miss. Try to go onto Google and get more pictures to see if there's, a, you know, it's meeting a standard for you, especially if you're flying with kids, because I do think sometimes if the terminals are a certain way, it's easy to entertain kids, nieces, and nephews, that sort of thing. If it looks a different way, you know, it looks like it came from the 1970s, it's a little bit harder. Now, I would mention if you have a really long layover, but not enough to really come and enjoy the city, you could go to the TWA Hotel, which is not so far away, and it was specifically remodeled to give people a place to hang out if they didn't have lounge access or they didn't like their lounge, which I have been in a couple lounges that still are pretty unrenovated. The TWA Hotel is supposed to be quite beautiful. It opened and then COVID hit, which was not ideal. If you're in one of the, let's call it less renovated terminals of JFK, take the, you know, the transit there and check out the TWA Hotel and hang out there for a little bit and then just come on back. LaGuardia is still a little bit of a mixed bag. Now, they renovated the Delta portion before COVID and it's not bad. It's not amazing. It definitely is because it's a smaller airport. I wouldn't say it's the most interesting airport to hang out in if you have a layover or if you've got to kind of go earlier for some reason. That the lounge is there, you have to double check. Some of them are actually before you go through security or have some kind of funky security situation to go to the lounge first and then go through security in the United Terminal. Now in the American Terminal though, they did do a big revamp there, but I would mention there's this one section that still looks like the movie The Langoliers from the 1970s. It's a little bit um, let's call it vintage, but vintage non-renovated. <laughs> um, so realize depending on what's going on there. Now, I would just mention that it's worth double checking how far you are from the gate if you're flying American in the terminal in LaGuardia because the renovated part, very cute, a little bit far from the gate. The last thing that I would mention is that no matter what amount of planning you do in advance, there's always things that just happen. And in New York, a lot of times the airports, this whole situation of travel can be ever so slightly less forgiving, even for the most prepared traveler. So especially because there's going to be a lot of things that just make it a little bit less obvious than maybe other cities, give it some time, have a little patience. And realize that most people that work in the travel industry, even if we're New York style and behavior, we do want you to have an amazing time in our city. That's all I've got prepared for this video. If there's things that you would tell people if they're choosing between these four airports that you feel like I missed off, stick it down below. I will be doing more logistics of New York videos because I want you to have an amazing time in my city. And I know it's so easy to let the logistics get overwhelming. Don't let it get overwhelming. We're excited you're here. We need your tourism money just like every other city. I want everyone to have great memories when they travel. And happy travels. See you next video.